I was kind of involved in the French video that you did the pieces for too. Pieces? Which one's that? You oh. cut all the things up. Let's talk about the French video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The name of that song was. Do you remember? Oh, uh, something. Rushmore Pack. Yeah, something stupid. And then the last one I'm gonna bring up is Tory Lanez. Uh, Tory Lanez and Spot 'em Got 'em. It was really Spot 'em Got 'em song. He loves photos. And I'm in the bathroom <laughs> taking a leak, and he's like, Frank, where are these photos, Frank? Dope video that we shot, Wolf of Wall Street themed. There was a lot of uh, legal substances floating around on set. I saw that. I had dude. a crowd to control. Yeah, you partake. I did not partake. Well, I know dude. you did. He Bro. was wearing an American flag suit. That is true. But I wasn't doing the white stripes, dog. Thank you, fire. You can Google me. I have an IMDb. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I know now. I have IMDb. It has three things on it. It has Chris Rebby triggered. Mm. Dizzy Wright video with Webby. Mm. And it has uh, MILF Hunters or something. I didn't shoot MILF Hunters, so I don't know why that's on there. You you were an extra? No, I don't know. You were participating? <sighs> no, I don't know how that got in there. I got to Lead actor? Uh, I was not involved in MILF Hunters. Fun okay, fact. Okay, Frankie. <laughs> Welcome to the Mike Squires and Friends podcast. I'm your host, Mike Squires. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Frankie Fire. Frankie Fire is a director and photographer, mainly centered around his music videos and portraits. He's directed videos for the likes of Chris Webby, French Montana, Smoke Dizza, Currency, and many more. I got to sit down with Frankie about all the artists he worked with and his experience directing for them. The Mike Squires and Friends podcast is proudly sponsored by DistroKid. Looking to broaden your musical horizons as an artist? Discover DistroKid. With its smooth and rewarding music distribution platform, DistroKid offers unlimited uploads while ensuring artists retain 100% of their royalties and earnings. Join the community of over a million artists who trust DistroKid to distribute their music across major platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, TikTok, Tidal, and Instagram. Having personally used DistroKid since 2018, I can attest to its superiority among distribution services. Collabing with fellow artists has become effortless, especially with the ability to split songs. With the DistroKid app, accessing these benefits is more convenient than ever. Safely sign up or log in with two-factor authentication, upload releases on the fly, monitor earnings, or withdraw funds from your DistroKid bank. Stay updated on royalties through push notifications, effortlessly share hyperfollow links, manage account details seamlessly, and track streaming stats from Apple and Spotify. Additionally, explore Mixia for professional grade mastering, DistroVid for music video distribution, and Instant Share for secure file sharing with collaborators, producers, and more. The DistroKid app is available on both iOS and Android. Download today from the App Store or Google Play Store to revolutionize your music career. Visit distrokid.com slash VIP slash Mike Squires to get 30% off your first year membership. You can support the Mike Squires and Friends podcast by subscribing on YouTube and hitting download on your preferred podcast platform. Now with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Mike Squires and Friends. <laughs> Frankie, welcome to the Mike Squires and Friends oh, podcast, man. dude. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. It's a fucking honor. Dude, I saw that you posted a photo of you with Stally and... Uh, That's how we started this. Yeah, we're starting right into it, Yeah, Kevin. we're going right into it. Well, you just posted it, dude. And yeah. Kevin Durant. Yeah, Kevin, KD, baby. Yeah. How'd that happen, dude? Uh, <clears throat> well, Stally had a song with Kevin Durant, and uh, he wanted to shoot the video, so he hit up Rook and me, and we just went to... K Katie's um, hotel room and shot a quick video. Beautiful thing, dude. Yeah, how yeah. was it like working with Kevin? Oh, super great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was quick. You know, he's a cool dude. He was chilling. You know, very chill. Like it wasn't. It wasn't a very crazy shoot that I'm sure about. We're talking about these other shoots that were more intense. Yeah, but I just wanted to say too. Like, congrats on this podcast, man. Let's like, go, dude. you're killing it, man. You're getting better at your craft, and I just want to know, like, what were some of the podcasts that inspired you to start this? Doug, why are you taking it over? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> dude, you need to settle down. Which one is my uh, close-up camera? Which one is the close-up? That's your close-up. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, <laughs> so Frankie's trying to expose me because I have a podcast, but don't watch <laughs> any podcast. That's like me being a director, and then you're like, what, what are some movies or TV shows that inspire you? And I say, <clears throat> my own. <laughs> like, I mean, that's the one that inspires me, dude, my own. But, uh, Frankie, I got some questions for you, dude. Yeah, go ahead. Well, Shoot questions. We what, can talk shit. What, 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 what do you was, want to do? What was growing up for Frankie like? Growing up, um, you know, it was cool. Uh, you know, lived in a two-family household for a little bit till my parents separated. I lived in Connecticut until, like, third grade. And then we moved to Florida. I lived there from third grade to 10th grade. And then I moved back up to Connecticut. Okay. So I get, you know, grew up down there a little bit. 
matured up here, you know? Yeah, because I noticed, like, when I scrolled back to some of your early photos, dude, you kind of had the Florida look going on, though. Oh, what's, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had, like, the grills, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. that's a very, I still like, got the grills, yeah. Yeah, but to me, that's, like, a very, like, Florida thing, you know what I mean? You don't see, like, that many, like, Connecticut people with, like, you had, like, you embraced, like, you looked like Florida, dog. Yeah, like, you know, even right now, I still wear white tees. I would wear baggy Bare- white tees and chains and grill. And, but, and what's crazy, though, is that everybody up here thinks I look like I'm from Los Angeles. They think, and they think I'm, like, a cholo. But then I go to L.A., and then I'm, when I'm really with them, them, them Southsiders, they're like, oh, no, you don't, you don't, you're not from here. You don't fit in. You don't walk like you're from here. So nobody knows anything. Yeah, dude. Well, I want to talk to you about some of your photography, because that's how you got into the game. Yeah. You got in the game doing a lot of street photography. Yeah. I mean, I really, I started off on my iPhone. I started mm. off taking photos on my iPhone, um, cars, sneak, really sneakers. Like, I, I am an Instagram baby. Like, I grew up off of Instagram with photography. Like, what was the hot thing back then was everybody was taking photos of their sneakers and fit checks. So I would take photos of my sneakers with my, can- with, um, my iPhone, edit them, Instagram, cool. Did cars. And then I eventually got a camera, got into street photography, was roaming the streets, taking, paying bums a dollar to take pictures of them. And it got more into portraits and, you know, from there it grew. And when I scrolled all the way back on your Instagram, dog, do you know what your first post is? I could tell you. It's like a, it's like a picture of like a house with like a light. No, it's not, dude. It's a video. It's a video of you cooking a beat. Yes, it is. Yeah, dude. Yeah, well, you said that your first photo. That was my first video. Oh, okay, fair, <laughs> That's fair, when fair. Instagram just got videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can we talk about you had a passion for making music too? Yeah, I, just, I mean, I love music. Obviously, I shoot and direct music videos, but I wanted to be fucking Alchemist. Like, I, I would sit at school, watch Alchemist cook beats, watch Monster, like watching everybody cook beats. I was like, I got to get an NPC, got an NPC, and was making beats. And doing photos at the same time, and I was just a lot better doing the photos, and I couldn't construct my beat, and I was getting frustrated because it wasn't good enough, and, you know, they were probably actually pretty good. I just couldn't get it all together and really just focus more on the camera and shit. Good good, good bet, right? Yeah. That was pretty good. The beat I heard from you, though, was fire, dude. I enjoyed it. Like, the, the little snippet Yeah, the 10 heard. seconds. Yeah, it was good, hey, though, but you could tell if that's you like get them. Yeah, but so at what point do you transition into videos? Um... So I had a Canon, well, I had a Canon three, T3i first. Everyone gets that camera. If you know, you know. Then you had a 6D, and I was taking pictures of cars and people. And then I was like, yo, I really want to jump into video. I seen the Sony A7S was the video camera. I sold everything I had. I sold all my sneakers. I, I was working a warehouse job. I put all my money into it, and I bought the A7S one, the first one. Mm. Without 4K. They had the A7S II out, but I was just like, just really couldn't drain my whole bank account for it. Yeah. So I, I had to get the lenses. So I got the lenses. I got the A7S one. And that's what really started me into video. I actually, my first videos ever started. I don't know if you have this on your fact sheet or nothing, but my first videos were my friend Moby Mav was throwing an event called the Photo Plug, where it was okay. like a portrait event where at one point in Connecticut, we had like 400 people showing up to this event. Oh, that's crazy. And it was, a, it was like a huge hub of creatives meeting each other, models and photographers, videographers, and I started shooting videos of, like, portraits of, like, people at these uh, portrait meets and started playing with them, and that's where, that was my first introduction to, like, video, video. I did shoot a music video when I had the T3i in New Haven in the hood for my boy London. That was, like, my first music video. I, I did that to, like, I got home, like, 3 in the morning, went to school. Is that the Midnight Apes one? Yeah, 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 dude, see, man? And uh, I shot that. I went to school, and I was like, Yo, that was sick. Like, I want to do that again. And I eventually got into music videos a little bit more. Yeah, dude. So going through, like, music videos and whatnot, what, like, what was the point where you thought this was going to be a career for you? Career? Um, <clears throat> really, my journey was, like, I started off small. I was doing, like, $250 music videos and working a regular job. I'd work a warehouse job from, like, 3 to 11 go home and edit on the weekend, shoot, and just repeat and repeat until I was, like, getting my craft up and feeling good about myself. Then I started taking trips to L.A. Mm. And just for some, on some car shit, on some, like, lowrider shit, and, you know, making content before I was really doing big stuff. Um, and I met a guy out there <clears throat> who said he was with Sony Latin Group. 
and I shot a music video for a Spanish artist. It was all, it was like a mariachi band. It was Spanish. It was the most money I ever made on a music video. It was $500. So I was psyched. And this dude told me that he was going to get me a bunch of gigs and he's going to, I'm going to get $1,500 a video and he has four lined up for me. He's like, I got to leave my job. I come back to Connecticut. I'm psyched. You know what I mean? These people in LA, I have my people in LA. And then I'm like, yo guys, I'm about to put my two weeks in. I'm about to, you know, start doing this for real. They said, ha, yeah, yeah, you'll be back in a week. And uh, I quit my job and just started doing it. But he ended up screwing me over. I get to LA, then call me and I'm just in LA sleeping on an air mattress at like a weed grow up. Just like, <laughs> dude, I got to go home and grind for money now. Yeah. So how do you bounce back from that? What's the next thing that happens? This is the crazy story, and you probably, maybe you have it in your notes. <laughs> Tell me the crazy story, uh, No, dude. but it was crazy because, like, I quit my job. I went to L.A. It didn't happen for me. The guy's ignoring me. I'm sleeping on an air mattress deflating in this fucking grow up in Fontana. And then <clears throat> out of nowhere, Rook calls me. I met Rook one time at a party and got his number and connected with him. I kind of knew he was a director. And he was like, hey, you in L.A. right now? I was like, yeah, what's up? He's like, yeah, I'm going to San Fran with, um, you ever heard of Smoke Dizza? And, like, I'm a huge currency and Smoke Dizza fan. I'm like, yeah, definitely, yeah. And Smoke Dizza's like, I'm shooting a video with him and Fat Boy. And Fat Boy was, like, huge at the time for his skits. He's like, you, uh, you want to give me a hand with him? I'm like, sure. He's like, yeah, it's in San Fran. I was like, how far are you? I'm like, looking it up. Ooh, eight-hour drive. I was like, all right, I'll take a flight. It's like $100. Took a flight up to San Fran and met Smoke Dizza and Rook and, and Fat Boy, and that was my first time actually working with Rook and Dizza. Yeah, dude. And you said Currency was is one of your favorite artists? Yeah. Is it true that the first time you went to the strip club, it was with Currency? Yeah, yeah. Can that, we talk about that story? Yeah. So we went down to New Orleans to shoot a video with Dizza and, uh, and Spitta. <clears throat> um, shot two videos, one of them being in the strip club. I don't know how old I was. I'm pro I mean, over 21, but I don't know. I'm not really a strip club guy. I've been to, like, a lot of famous strip clubs. Like, I've been to some cool strip clubs, but went to the strip club, and that was my first time going, filming him, learning how to throw money the proper way, the proper wrist movements, and just seeing everything going on. And it was a dope strip club, too. It was, like, I haven't been to, like, really any like that. There's girls hanging and spinning, and it was just a dope experience that, like, your idol favorite rapper is, like, you first time going to a club or having a cool experience, and he's mad cool, you know? It's kind of like smoking with, like, Snoop Dogg for the first time. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the same energy, dude. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Can we talk about Frank Days? Okay, yeah, we can talk about Frank Days. What's going on with Frank Days, dude? <laughs> what do you think's going on with Frank Days? What do you know? What do you know, Squires? I know that you had a couple episodes of these. <laughs> so, yeah, so if not not many people know, I had like a TV show. It was a vlog, basically, but yeah. I made it into a TV show. Um, I shot it on my iPhone, and this was a time in, a time in my life where I was like, I had a part-time job as a school photographer, and just, and just a bull, I had, bull, I just had bullshit jobs, and I was just selling weed, and it was just, I was fresh out of high school. I wasn't really doing anything important. I had no purpose, whatever. But I'm just filming me and my friends on my iPhone and making it like a TV show. I shot like 24 episodes. I made it. It's like about three hours long. And it's really just me and my friends at that time period, hanging out, smoking, drinking, gambling, being degenerates. My, my friend's birth of his child is on that. Like one of the episodes, like it became where I was just filming them and they're like, yo, what are, what are you doing? And then they became characters. And it was like almost a sitcom slash reality TV vlog thing. And it was, like, literally to this day the funniest thing I've ever edited or shot. I had so much fun editing it and laughing. And probably no one's going to see it because I don't really want it out there. But the people that have seen it have seen it. And I'm going to get them some DVDs for Christmas of it. And it's kind of a personal thing. But, like, yeah, I made my own show before I was even doing video off the iPhone. Yeah, speaking of Christmas, dude. I know that you have a... Yo, you firing right into these subjects, bro. Yeah, you dude. You firing on all <laughs> cylinders, man. Yeah, come on, dog. <laughs> but you know where this is going. Yeah. You got a Christmas photo you drop every year, dude. And this year, year, they go viral, dude. I've yeah. seen them all over. Every year, I ch I have a Christmas photo. Maybe I don't know how you're going to edit this or what you do if you got some sound effects or if you can put the photos maybe like right here or something. You can okay. showcase the we photos. Yeah. Let me add that in there for yeah, you for more post work. Yeah, yeah that's thank cool. you, dude. I got you. Don't I worry. I appreciate that. I'm trying that. to enhance what you got here, man. I'm excited for you. Uh, I really appreciate but, that, but the, but the <laughs> the Christmas photos are dope. Every year, I do a Christmas photo. It started with me just wanted, you know, start on Instagram. It's, it's been Five years now. So five years I've been doing this. The first one I did was me and my friend went behind like a, a wood company factory. And I bought the last, it was before Christmas. I bought the last Christmas tree you could buy at Home Depot. 
And we set it on fire, and I had my boy Moby Mav, who shoots all my Christmas photos, talented photographer that taught me a lot about photography. Um, I lit a Christmas tree on fire and sat next to it, and I was like, yo, this is dope. And everyone thought it was dope. And then every year since then, I just tried to upgrade, do something creative, and and try to like up the production value every year. To now where I'm like a seasoned director, I'm like, oh, now I can do this, and I can do this. And, you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's fun. It, it goes... Pretty big, you know, every year it gets more and more likes and more exposure and people enjoy it and that's my like little gift, you know? Yeah, you have any ideas for the one that you're going to do this year? You don't have to say what it is, but do you have any ideas? Uh, mm, I had some ideas, but I after shooting a bunch, I kind of know what works really good. So I don't know yet. I, it kind of go off like how I feel that year and what I want to try. So I don't know. It's going to be fun though. So t- yeah. tune in for that. I want to talk <laughs> it, talk to you about one of your early collaborators. Okay. Ghetto Guitar. Yeah. Can we talk about how you guys connected? Yeah. Um, we were working at a warehouse together. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, uh, I think I did some photos for him at first, and we connected, and then uh, I wanted to jump into video. And, like, I literally, when we were working at a warehouse together, that's when I purchased the Sony A7S1. Is like, I, I, was to- I told him, I was like, yo, I'm about to sell all my sneakers, all my shit. I'm about to order this camera right now and do video. He was one of the first persons I did video on the camera, too. Uh, I shot, like, a little thing for him, but, yeah, that's my dog. You know, we kind of watch each other come up and grow. Like, if anyone knows who Ghetto Guitar is, he's a pretty lit producer who did songs for Turbo, for Gunna, for Lil Baby, like, I was gonna big placements, s- Wiz. I was going to say that because you guys went from working in the warehouse together to you shooting some flicks for him on stage with Gunna. Right. That was my first time, like, around, like, celebrities. Mm, can we talk about it? Yeah, we could talk about anything you want, dog. Let's I'm talk fucking about here, it. man. Let's do it, we dude. could curse now, and your monetization won't get fucked up. <laughs> you forgot to bleep that one that I did in the beginning, but dog, you're making so much extra work for me. No, I don't. I don't. You're not gonna cut this. Yeah, no, I don't. No, you're no, not. This gonna, is a. This, this is, is a, a swear this, friendly. No, it's not. No, it is a swear friendly. You told Dusty he could swear. He could swear. So I can swear. You can swear. So yeah. why are you making it swear friendly? Oh yeah, swear friendly, as in like we accept swearing. Oh, I think said okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Anyway, so <laughs> with the gunner, uh, yeah, he invited him. You know, he uh, ghetto guitar did the beats for him, and he went on tour with Gunner everywhere. They went to Ireland. You got You're gonna interview him. I'm sure you're gonna interview him. Yeah. Soon. Um, he's got good stories. You gotta so, connect me, dude. I don't know him personally. Easy, no problem. Yeah. Done. Yeah. He'll be here tomorrow. Okay. I'll call him right on the podcast. How about, <laughs> so, but but we went to. He invited me to shoot at Irving Plaza for Gunner's tour. They did in New York. You know, went there. Um, first time at Irving Plaza. Went backstage. My first time being around celebrities and being around. Um, and going backstage and having that, like, getting that, fe- you know that feeling, Squires. You've, you've been around a lot of big people, and you've been next to them, and you get to go backstage and see all these people. It's and like a little behind experience. The yeah. yeah. No, pe- yeah, people love it. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was crazy because, like, met Gunna um, back then uh, and uh, took some photos of him. And then I just didn't know who was going to be there. Um, ended up Roddy Rich was there, mm. Blueface, Meg The Stallion. A lot of big people in the building, and that was my first time experience, like, celebrities and filming them and them being okay with it. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, I want to do more of this, you know? Yeah. I want to take it back to a silly shot that I saw that you did. You did a shot where it was on your Ronin, and there was, like, a bullet attached, and it was, like, following the arts. It was, like, a cool shot, but, like, you guys were going through buildings. It was, like, just an infant, like, train. Like, what was going on there? What inspired that? Um, I saw, you know, I'm going to just be, I'm going to keep it Real with you guys. I'm going to keep it 100% real. Like, I saw somebody do that shot, and like all great artists, we steal. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, I want to do that shot. I want to put it in a music video. So I saw I saw it on another great music video. I don't I don't remember who did it, but it was cool. It wasn't hip-hop. Mm. And I was doing a video with Rook uh, with this artist called Lil 50. Um, he's like a 14-year-old rapper. I don't know if you ever looked into him, but he's like a 14-year-old rapper. And the shot was this guy did a drive-by, and I wanted to make it so like the bullet... Is a t- the camera is attached to the bullet, so we had uh, our friend Stealing Roses make a fake bullet on a drill, and I attached the camera to a drill, and I was just following this guy running with this drill and holding the camera <laughs> and shit, and and they came out dope. No, that's awesome, dude. I want to talk to you about how you come up with some of your video concepts, though. Like, what's your process when you get a song? Like, what's the first thing you do? Every everyone is different. Like, I gotta hear the song, and I want to see how it makes me feel. And so then a lot of things come in mind at first, like, is it bright? Is it dark? Is it moody? Is it not? How do I feel about it? And then from there, 
I just start thinking. I might smoke some weed. I'll start thinking about ideas. I'll watch other videos. I'll scroll through Shot Deck. I'll scroll through Pinterest. I'll just get some ideas. Maybe I also like talking to the artists, and I do like talking to other creatives. Like sometimes I come up with the best ideas talking with other people and brainstorming. So I like to collaborate with people and and come up with stuff. I think that's how like a lot of great work happens. So a lot of different outlets. It's just you know. Yeah. It's all different. I want to talk to you about some of the music videos you've done. Okay. Let's talk Yes, I Do. French Montana. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yes, I Do. So how did that video come to be? What was the idea behind it? Do you feel great on the execution? You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Yes, I Do with French Montana, uh, directed by me and co-directed by Rook because some of it was his idea. But really, it was just a run and gun. Like, uh, French had a dope. Mercedes that was like one of 50 in the world. It was like a $2 million Mercedes. Uh, and we're like, all right, let's go film you hanging out of this car. Hopefully it doesn't wreck or a, pe- a button doesn't fall off because you can't buy that button ever again. And we filmed that. We went. He wanted to do some club scene. We went to a club and, you know, it was a great video. It's dope. Um, you know, we worked with French a lot. French is a funny, interesting guy. Um, yeah, but it was, you know, cool, easy video. Yeah, dude. I want to talk to you, too, about the queso video. Oh, yeah. A lot of cheese involved. Yeah, well, you're going to have web on here, too, so, you know, hopefully this could merge into the web verse of, of queso. Yeah, dude, someone could cut all my podcasts together, like the storylines, too, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, he said someone, not you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get, someone. I, got, I think I got some editors for you, too, by the way. Yeah. Sidebar. Let's go, dude. But I need to know about queso, dude. Um, okay, so what started that, bro? I think, well, the first video I ever did with Webby was Triggered. Triggered, yeah. And it was a game show type of thing. If you go back and watch Triggered, Chris Webby. Um, and then we were coming up with Queso. I don't know how it really came about, but it, we ended up landing on, like, let's make a, let's make another, like, t- TV show like that. And I wanted to do a game show. And then he was like, yo, let's just do a whole television network on some Rick and Morty type of thing. And then it just ended up being a television TV shows of cheese yeah, yeah. Dude. so <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know go watch the video case okay? so it is mud wrestling and cheese a cheese game show webby getting arrested for cheese just all ridiculous queso cheese related where did you guys get that amount of cheese ray sourced it right uh yeah ray finds everything but i mean don't tell anybody but some of it was paint <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> but some of it was paint and then dude. and then for the one for the infomercial for that one shot i had to go buy a huge block of cheese at uh this spot in north haven this italian spot and the block was bigger than my head like and it was for literally one shot of it just rotating it was like 200 dollars for that cheese wheel <laughs> and then we gave it to webb after and it sat in his fridge for i don't know i think it's still there today <laughs> No one needs that much cheese, and it's not even good cheese. Dog, when I saw that, I was like, that video's got to stink, dog. Like, because now that, <laughs> you know, that amount of cheese, dude. Nah, nah, nah. Come on. We have a great time on set. No one's going to smell home like cheese. Yeah, let's talk about the oath, man. French Montana. Another and and Chink's yeah. Drugs. Yeah. All right, so that came about through, actually, this dope producer uh, named uh, Dollars. So Dollars is a producer that, like, was super close with Chink's. That was basically his record. Um, he got, well, in Shink's record, and he got French on it. And, you know, he seen our work and reached out to us. And, you know, that was his first time working with us. But, like, he was just blown away by what we were able to do and capture, you know, obviously Chinks isn't here with us. So capturing, you know, dope imagery that, like, fits the vibe and the song. Um, and it came out too. But I, lo- I love that video. How would you go about planning that video? Um, we came up with the ideas and the pro- dollars came up with most of the production besides some of the uh, the choir that I'm sure you've seen and Dave Zombie fake playing the piano um, and, and and all of that. We we sourced in Connecticut and got, you know, people that wanted to be in the video to be in it. Um, he got the dancer, the ballerina girl and, and the location. And then for French, that was actually a fluke. We were in Miami for a video that didn't happen. And we ended up just shooting that one scene, and I just came to Miami to shot that one scene with him and left. Yeah. <laughs> and then another video I want. I'm going to just keep firing off videos, but I want to talk to you about sure. Gotti, dude. Oh, Webby with Gotti. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that, dude. Yeah, it was a great video. Um, love that video because I'm Italian, you know. Um, everyone loves mob movies. You know, Webb's a big mob fan. Um, it was dope, you know. We had to do a mob theme. The song's called Gotti, so... You know, we got a couple cool cameos in there and just dope lighting, you know, film. We wanted to give, I wanted to have that film look and, 
you know, had a little team and came out dope. Which video are you most proud of, though? Like, not even just of the ones I named of just overall where it's like the treatment that you came up. And for people that don't know, treatment's like a video plan. Yeah. So the treatment that you came up with to the execution of the video and you're like, we nailed this one. I honestly love it. And it doesn't get talked about a lot, but like one of my favorite ones that I did and it's the first uh, video I shot in the RE, you know, uh, was the Dizzy Right and Be Real uh, promoters uh, video. I want to talk about that one too. Yeah. yeah. So we could just hop into it. Let's do it, dude. Uh, um, that was one of my favorite videos because it was kind of like a sitcom. Um, it was kind of like a, a, what's the word? Comedy movie music video. It was like a Seth Rogen, How High type of thing where Dizzy, uh, how did it fucking start? Dizzy, oh no, this dude gets arrested driving, smoking weed, and Dizzy has to get him out of uh, out of court and be real as a lawyer. It's like it's just a funny comedy music video, but I love how it came out. Um, it was such a skeleton crew. It was me, Rook, and uh, Caleb Eblins. I don't know if you know him yeah, from Connecticut. Yeah, of course, dude. Um, and it was just us as a skeleton crew. We put all the money towards the production. You know, I got to work with Be Real, which is super dope because, you know, I love Be Real. I love Cypress Hill. Um, LA, like, you know, I'm always in LA, LA's got my heart. So to be able to work with him and he's a legend, like, and put him in my boy's low rider, you know, there was just like a cool moment for me. Um, that was one of my favorite videos that came out that I was excited to do and was super happy with it. Doesn't get talked about a lot. Yeah. And the chain of those Dizzy Wright videos, there was one that I was in mm -hmm. when we were out in the desert with Dizzy and Webby. Yeah. The one that you kind of fucked up a little bit, huh? I want to talk about <laughs> it, dude. So I was... On a video shoot with Frankie, and I got cast as an extra last minute. Yeah. And uh, they had one glass bottle, like one of the breakable glass bottles that was like a sugar bottle yep. that you could smash over someone's head. And that was the idea that, yeah, you know, I think Dizzy was going to pick up the bottle and smash it over one of the cowboy's heads. Yes. Uh, I knocked it over and smashed it. <laughs> yeah, ground, just dude. this ruined that shot. And you know, I guess on our end, we went cheap on the production. I guess we should have bought two, right? You know, but yeah, dude. Well, it was, but you had nothing to do with the bottle, so you breaking it was just like a full ah, Squires. What the dude, fuck, like, dude? It like was that bottle hit, bottle hit the ground, and it was dead silent. I looked over, <laughs> I looked over at Rook, and he just like. Shaking his head like a disappointed <laughs> father at me. I look at you, your your hands on your face, dude. Yeah, because it would have just like added that extra production, just, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's all right, but that was a fun video. That was a Western video we shot in the middle of Nevada on So Hot. It was hot, but that fun was a video. fun one, dude. Yeah, I love that type of stuff. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of what else happened that day. I mean, that, you guys were shooting in a mine as well, dude. Y yeah, we went. You went. You didn't go in the mine with us. I did go in the mine with you. Basically, that whole place was like one of the first mining places in Nevada, like one of the oldest lip standing ones there. Um, so we went in the mine. We did some shots in the mine. Webby and Dizzy rode a horse. That was first time Dizzy on a horse. Sick, sick video, y'all. Dude, what are some of the locations that you've gone to that have just been? Really cool that you probably wouldn't have went to otherwise. So many everywhere. Like, yeah. I mean, just to name, I mean, besides the U.S. and going to states that I don't think I would have went to regardless. I mean, I've also been to like Puerto Rico. Mm. I mean, even weird places like the desert, you know, it's like I don't I wouldn't just go hang out in the desert. But, yeah. But but there's weird places that I probably won't remember like that where it's like I get a chance to go to. But then I've been to like Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Paris. I've been, you know, some well, places. Let's talk about filming. can we talk about Hawaii a little bit? Like what was it like? Getting oh, yeah, I'm going back there in March on vacation. Oh, for let's my birthday. go, dude. Yeah. But what's it like getting the call where it's like we got a video we're trying to shoot and it's in Hawaii? Well, the first time, well, both times that I've went to film out there, it's been like a close friend of mine. So my friend's like, yo, we're going to Hawaii. You want to come film and hang out? Fuck yeah, let's do it. So every time I've been out there, even Puerto Rico, they were just more like relaxed because I was there with friends filming and like, and actually enjoyed it too, you know? It yeah. wasn't like intense production. We got to get these shots. It was more like, let's go hang out, film. Whatever we get, we get. Yeah. No, that's cool. Obviously it was good though. Then what about Paris, dude? Paris was a bigger production, right? E not really. Yes and no. That was a video that Rook... Um, Long story short, uh, Rook got a call. I forgot what uh, <clears throat> I forgot what label called him, but Quiet Leonard was doing a, a, a mixtape with different people on it, um, and one of them had two people: one person from Paris and one person from the Netherlands on a song. So they wanted to fly Rook out to uh, Paris to shoot it. Rook hits me up like, "Yo, let's go to Paris." We go to Paris. We meet them, and uh, we kind of told them what we wanted, and it was pretty chill. Like we we shot on a basketball court. We went to like. 
kind of the projects of Paris, like outskirts of Paris. So we got to see a little bit outside of Paris, but it was it was a fun time. You know, we stayed there for an extra day or two, like soaked it all in. And it was just a dope experience, you know, being able to like go out there and, and work and meet people like. Yeah. And the fact that you were able to get there because of your craft, you know what I mean? Like you picking up a camera has built all these opportunities for you to, you know, travel the world, work with people. You know, how does that feel overall that you're able to like, you know, take a minute to reflect on it, <laughs> that you do this for a living. Like, this is your thing, man. Yeah, you get so caught up in the moment when you're really working and you're super busy that you don't see it. But when I go back and I look at all the stuff I've done, it just makes me so happy, you know? Like, you don't want to do that too much where you're always looking back and happy because you always want to get to the next thing and and move on and, and, and enjoy the stuff. But you got to also smell the roses sometimes and enjoy what you're doing. And that's, like, a big part of it because especially in this field, it's like... We get so caught up with making sure everybody else gets what they need. Like, we got to meet your deadline. We got to make sure you look good. We got to make sure you get what you need out of this. You got to make sure you get your content, you know. So having to do make sure everybody gets what they need sometimes, and we do enjoy it. It's like we got to also enjoy the moment of doing it and, you know, have fun. How do you prioritize your happiness when, like, things are stressful? Just me personally, like, I just have fun, man. Like, everything is usually fun. Something's going to be funny to me, your joke. Like, even in the moments of chaos where, like, shit's going wrong in my, and just in my head, like, I'm like, bro, I do this for a living. Like, we were in Miami during the middle of COVID at a Trap Manny Ruby Rose video that Rick was shooting. And there was, like, this COVID officer, this old dude. And he was like, he's like, guys, everyone gather around. This is serious. We got to talk right now. He's like, uh... So listen, we all know COVID's a real thing and uh, people's families are dying out there, but, you know, just be safe and let's have fun. And we're all just looking at each other like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it's, dude, well, it's crazy to talk about someone like death and saying how fun, like that's like the <laughs> yeah. opposite. Like, yo, people, people are dying. Go get them, cowboy. Yeah, like, but I'm, I'm just laughing or even just like, this is one of those moments where it's like, I do this, like, and in the video. It's, we rented this mansion out and it was like an Asian family that didn't speak English and we're like, oh, we're just going to do a dancing scene in the four-year area and it's just trap many just throwing stacks of money with strippers and they're all like, oh, and I'm just picking the money off the ground. I'm like, is this, this is what I do for a living? Like, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think music videos just kind of put you in like insane situations yes. that you would never. Yeah. What's an insane situation that you've just been in where it's like. What is happening right now? So many, bro. I can't I can't really remember like off the top of my head. Like if you give me a refresher, I'll have a story for it. But Yeah, we'll run e through some more videos. Yeah, too. but every video, every day is something different when we're on set. Every video something's gonna go wrong. And like music videos is basically the part of figuring out the problem. Like figure out this answer to the uh to whatever. I get what you're the saying. Solution they, to the whatever. Yeah, solution to the problem. <laughs> So if someone's out there and they're, you know, trying to become a director and they are encountering all these problems, what's some advice you could give to them about, like, maybe not worrying about these problems as much? It's just like people think the bigger the shoe is, the less problems you have and the more glory and the more fun it is, it's just more problems. So it's just like just know if you're getting into this field or you want to get into it, which is pretty hard to get into right now because there's so many people that want to do it. It's uh, you have a lot to overcome. You got to be different. You got to be creative. You got to stand out. You got to be different. You got to go out there and, and meet people and shake hands. And there's going to be headaches and there's going to be a lot of annoying stuff. And it's, this game is designed to break you. Like if you if you're in it for a, a long time, that stands a lot of uh, testament to who you are. And the people that are in this industry or have been in this industry or created this and that have been in it for a long time, they'll see that too and be like, oh, you've been doing it for this many years. Like, you know. Your blessings are going to come to you, you know what I mean? Don't expect, like, you're going to do the next video next day and everything's going to change. Shit could happen, but it's just, like, either way, you're going to experience a lot of, like, a lot of crazy stuff and a lot of f situations you got to figure out on the fly, you know? It's not yeah. for everybody. You said this industry could break you, dude. Is there mm -hmm. a moment that you felt like giving <laughs> up or just quitting, dude? I think everybody's had that moment. I think everybody in this game has had that moment. The difference is... Is if you did it or not. Mm. You know what I mean? So everybody's had that moment where like, oh, fuck this man. I don't, know if I don't need this shit. You know, <laughs> I don't need to do this. Yeah. But hey, if you can stand it, man, you'll your blessings will come, you know? Yeah. Let's talk about the Frankie Fire logo, dude. How did your logo come to be? You know, that was early stages in the warehouse with ghetto guitar. I need a logo. Well, you know, Frankie Fire. Like, uh, I wanna do like a I've been to cartoons and I'm you know, I'm a huge Simpson fan and I'm into that. So there was an artist at the time, he's still dope, um, his name's Frico Rico out of Atlanta, 
He does a lot of dope uh, stuff. He's done stuff for Action Bronson, covers for him and Gucci Man, a lot of people. Um, so early on, I was following him. I liked his work. I reached out to him. To, like I sent him a picture of me and a fire and kind of like a fire thing I wanted, and he drew it. And I was like, cool. Yeah, it's simple. It fits. I like it. I like cartoons. Like I like your style. And just been sticking with it. Yeah. Well, let's even bring it. How did you become Frankie Fire? Where's the name from, dude? Well, you don't have it in your notes? You didn't dig deep? No, I do have it. My, I, do, <laughs> no, I got you. I got you. I have it, but I, I want got, you to say it. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, what, what? Really? Instagram, baby. So I was on Instagram. My name, you know, taking photos in high school. My name on Instagram was Frankie D's. And then my boy... Uh, I also sold weed at the time and I had like the best weed in town. Like I had like all the, like back when like AK-47 was the shit and permanent marker and green crack. And I had like the best weed in town. I would sell weed in school and all of that. And then uh, my boy was like, yo, you should be Frankie Fire. Or like just throughout like Frankie Fire. I'm like, Frankie Fire. I was like, that's dope. I'm about to change my Instagram name. Fuck it. I'm Frankie Fire. And I was just taking Insta- like Instagram photos and selling good weed. And Frankie Fire emerged from that. Yeah. And now... It kind of just applies to your videos, you know what I mean? You weren't yeah. able to change your name. Well, because fire it means... could apply to anything. Yeah, because anything could be fire if it's good. So fire means dope good. So it's just like I had good weed, I had good photos, and now I just have good vision. And, and you know, I say I see myself saying it on set a lot, like, oh, that's fire, that's fire. And people say the same thing. It's just like, you know, when you see something good, it's just good, you know? Yeah, and another video that you worked on was Grenade with Webby and Echo, yeah. dude. I wanted to bring that up as one of my favorites, too, because... Yeah, when are you going to have Echo on a podcast? When Echo gets out here, dog. <laughs> um, He'll do it. Yeah, he's just yeah, got yeah. to come here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was one of my favorite videos, too, because the concept from that, go watch uh, Grenade by Chris Webby and Echo. Uh, I took the concept from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the episode called The Gang Saves a Day, where a uh, convenience store is getting robbed, and they all just sit there and daydream about like how they would save the day. And in their heads, they're all like egotistical and larger than life. And that's what we did with them. Like, fucking, we got a stunt double for Webby doing flips in the corner store. And, like, it was so fun to shoot. It was so fun. Like, that's one of my favorite videos. Yeah, and what's funny about the stunt double, though, to me is it's like, it's just, like, if you know Webb as a person, it's clearly not Webby. (laughs) You know what I mean? That And we made it obvious with, like, you didn't see his, like, he had no tattoos. And we wanted to make it obvious, like, as, like, comedic comedic purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. So let's talk about a video that we worked on together, dude. We have one, dude. Yeah. One Way Road. Yeah, One Way Road. Well, we have, well, I mean, I was kind of involved in the French video that you did the pieces for, too. The pieces? Which one's that? You oh. cut all the things up. I thought you were going to say that. Oh, let's talk about the French video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. We'll talk about We'll talk about I forgot what the name of that song was. You remember? Oh, uh, something Rushmore s- Pack. Yeah, something stupid. Rushmore Pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait. Uh, let's, no, no. So let's, let's, go, let's go One Way Road. <laughs> all right, yeah, cool. And then let's go Rushmore Pack. Yeah, One Way Road. We got to work with Zarzan, dude. Yeah, I want... How did you get involved in that? Because I think I started hitting Webb with, like, treatment. I think what happened is he put feelers out for treatments, and we all were sending them stuff, and they were just, like, put them all together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, I like, I remember really wanting to get Zarzan for that video. I was like, yo, that's a must, dude. Like, Yeah, you threw that into his head, the Zarzan thing? Yeah, and Webb was fixated on it ever since I said it, dude. I know. yeah, One Way Road, Chris Webby, go watch it. (laughs) Run them streams up. You know, hit a like, subscribe to Squires, you know? Let's go, dude. Um, But... Yeah, and that was cool. It was like a 90s theme video, right? We all kind of collaborated, put our ideas in, you know, filmed. Was it two days or one day that we shot? I think it was a one day shoot. Uh, I think so. Yeah, you edited it, you killed it. We gave it that 90s skater vibe, and it was a cool video. It was uh, underrated, in my opinion. Like, people didn't, you know, I didn't feel like it wasn't appreciated enough. But also, too, with the Zarzan thing, watch the videos. It's an old man with a beard in this crazy van that drives around where they live at. Connecticut icon, dude. Norwalk icon. Nobody in the rest of the world whoa, knows nothing whoa. about this guy. Dog. That doesn't translate like how it translates to you and Webb. Like you guys are like, yo, this is sick Zars and Tusser was like, all right, cool. We got an old dude with a beard that Webb's hanging out with. But it made the aesthetic was cool. It was a cool video. But I'm just saying, like he's an icon in my eyes, Frankie. Matter of fact, we should try to get Zarzan on the pod. Hey, I'll come hang out when you if you do that. I'll <laughs> pop in on a third mic and just ask him about something, you know. <laughs> Let's Let's bring it over to Rushmore Pack, though. Yeah. Because that's the other video we yeah, worked on. Yeah, Squires worked on a French video with us. Yeah. I did do that, dude. You stayed up hours cutting out oh, pictures. <laughs> dude, exacto knifing, bro. My my office was a mess, dude. Uh, 
I don't know if you I'm don't know. You, do, you have no question. Yeah, <laughs> no, but yeah, no. So so we did a video with French. We shot all the video, uh, all the shots, whatever. Also, too, about that video, I want to state that we did a drone shot. We hired this dude, Remy, to do a drone shot. We had a convertible Maybach and went to Times Square. Is and, that the FPV drone? Yeah, we had an FPV drone in Times Square just downs French and then also P. Diddy stole that shot right after. Anyways. Wow. Yeah, but, um, I got to talk to you about that, too, yeah. actually. Not just... Let's finish this Rushmore pack part. But yeah. I gotta talk about stealing shots. Smoking on that Rushmore pack. Yeah, dude. All right, um, yeah, and then we shot the video, and we're like, yo, this would be a dope effect if you, like, printed out every frame of the video and cut it and made it moving. And you did that for periods of days, and you're probably in your office sweating and cutting Three and days yelling straight, at your dude. girl. Like, ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> but it came out dope, and you fucking nailed it, you know? Thank you, dude. Yeah. No, that was, that was the most intense. Because, so at that time, too... My laptop was on its way out too. Mm-hmm. So it was I remember, like, dog, like the combo of my laptop just like not wanting to put that video together and be like, bro, it was mad stressful. But we got it done and it yep. came out dope. That's how all music videos are for us. We're stressed out to the end and then we're like, whew, that's dope, man. I'm glad we did that. Yeah, dude. Well, I want to talk to you. So listen, do you feel like your sauce has been taken in other music videos? I don't want to say yes because like, I do the same shit. Like, I just told you, I steal shots. Like, yeah. I, I take inspiration from others. So it's just like, I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going. Go, where am like, I going with this? Just you can finish. Like, I'll finish it. Yeah. I did see a Drake video recently uh-huh. that was all VHS. And I couldn't help but think that you got, you and Rook kind of had that aesthetic on lock before, dude. So... Let's just say this, right? Nothing is new under the sun with videos, right? Everything that's been done that's popular now has been done before. Um, Things that can be noted are this. The VHS, everyone's using VHS in their music videos now. It's very popular. It's become very popular. Me and Rook were doing that, and we were kind of calling ourselves the Hardy Boys because, like, he would shoot the video, I would shoot the VHS, we'd switch, I'd take photos, and we had our own little thing going um, we can date it back to this, like maybe a little earlier, but this for sure stamped. You could watch the Smoke Dizza, West Side Gun, and Benny the Butcher 730 music video. That is like the first time that we use VHS and the photo sequences that you see that everyone uses in their video. Uh, I don't know how many years ago that is, but that's like a stamp of like, all right, this is when we started doing this heavy. So go back, watch that video, 730, Smoke Dizza, West Side Gun, uh, Benny the Butcher. Whatever that date says, that's when we started doing it. If you got a video before that, it's cool. I mean, shit, they did the photo sequences on the wire, you know? Yeah. It's been all done, but like, you know, we're, you know, Rook's in the game, I'm in the game, you know, people see our work, we see other people's work, so it's not uncommon for people to see what we do and do it, you know, and that's a fair game, and, you know, I don't want to take credit for something because that... I sound like an egomaniac, but, you know, we we sauce, man. We got the sauce, bro. Yeah, dude. Well, an effect that I really enjoyed that you did was on the Last Night Shy video, the claymation. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah. How uh, did that come to be, dude? I wanted to, I been wanting to do a claymation. I been wanting to do a full claymation video. Um, And wanted to make that video dope. Wanted to pop that video off for him. You know, reached out to someone that does claymation, and he was able to work with our budget for that part. And obviously has to be in the beginning of the video, so it just starts off like, oh, you know. Um, I think it's dope. Like I said, I like cartoons. I like like having my head in the clouds in a creative space. So when I can incorporate stuff like that and take you out of like real world stuff, like I love it. Yeah. And how was working with Dave East? Oh, East is cool. He's just like a regular dude, man. You can fucking have a conversation about Cheerios with yeah. <laughs> Sneak, whatever, you know, like cool dude, you know, worked with him a couple of times. Yeah. What's a memory you have from on set with him? Um... Probably more so tell me about an album he has. I think it's very dope that I can't uh, tell on here of who he has it with. Um, but, you know, just chopping it up with him, regular shits, you know. Just sound- good homie vibes. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a memory, like, maybe from a recent music video that just, like, you thought every, like, the video just wasn't going to happen. And you thought everything was going to fall apart. And then in the fourth quarter, it really came together. Everything wasn't going to happen and it came together recently. Yeah, or, like, it doesn't have to be recent, but, like, a video that might have, like, you had a plan, and then the plan just got scrapped, and you had to go to plan B real quick. I mean, it happens so many times, bro. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, it happens almost every time. Not every time, but, like, majority of times. There's been so many times where we just have to shift, bro, and we just gotta figure it out. And what what do you think causes that? Is it, like, people not showing up, Ooh. like, things falling through? Yeah, it's everything. It's fucking people showing up late, people needing their haircut, people... 
want coming on set not like an night just anything and everything bro like anything can switch the whole video around and we're just gonna have to think of something else to do you yeah know? Let's, talk, let's talk about your number one extra Who's my number one extra? Uh, got, Tony? Nah. <laughs> yeah. It's shout a, out to Tony the Greek. It's Ray, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Ray is your number one extra, dude. You know, he's played a cop many times. He's been shot yeah. in videos. Maserati Ray. Um, yeah, my dude. producer, my manager. If you want to book me, Maserati Ray. Um, yeah. He, I don't know, man. He enjoys being in the, like, we always need a, sometimes we need a cop in a video, and he just got the cop look. Um <laughs> We went to a, we went to go film at a pool party like a pull up video, and uh, we get to the gate and there's people there, um, at the gate like you know telling us to pay to park or whatever and just seeing who's coming in. I said I'm shooting a video. They let me in. Ray pulls up in his own car with his fucking Ray bands on, and you're like he's like yo I'm here for the video. He's like what video? And he's like dog I ain't gonna lie you look like a cop. He's like, I'm not a cop. <laughs> Calls up the people like I'm telling you I'm shooting like look at my Instagram like trying to explain that he's actually not a cop. That's you know? mad funny, dude. But yeah, how did you connect with Ray? Oh, through Rook. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, like the first time I met Rook in L.A., we filmed, you know, shot together. Then I met Ray through Rook and slowly, you know, that's got- how that the trifecta. Because I I look at you guys as like a unit, you know. For sure, yeah, we're a team. You know, we're we're a team. You know. Yeah. So I want to talk to you too about. Let's talk about. We'll go here. Let's talk about Hoes All Over, dude, with Kados and Shump. Okay. How was that video? I love Shump, dude. He just came on, you know. Why are you asking me about that? I didn't even shoot that video. Rook shot it. Oh. Yeah. What did you, you do? <laughs> oh, what you, wait, got him. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what did you do on Hoes All Over then? Uh, I just helped on set and took some photos. Mm, that video is not even up right now. Like, that video is, like, I'm private. Mm. Yeah. We're going to cut that section out, and we're going to hop right Why? No, well, you can leave it. Yeah, well, it's not that exciting. It's uh, not. <laughs> you bro, know what we'll do? I want to keep it real and raw with you, Squires. We can fucking talk about anything. We can talk Dog. about me skipping school to get a haircut in Florida and smoking weed in my friends up coming. We can talk about whatever you want, bro. We could talk about that, but you know what we're going to talk about, yeah, dude? Yeah, the, the, the click base. So what do we want to talk about? We're going to talk about the Wolf of Wall Street video, dude. Coming Ooh. out today. Let's go, dude. At 10 p.m. on Chris Webby's channel. Well, this is coming out tomorrow, right? You're dropping this podcast tomorrow? No, 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 no. This comes out. Why doesn't it come out tomorrow? There's a line, dog. <laughs> there's a line. <laughs> no, I got it. Like, uh, I, I'm fucking a, with you. I'm fucking with you. But uh, third week of March, so the video will be out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so go watch Chris Webby, uh, Dial Tone featuring Millie's. It's already out on YouTube. Uh, dope video that we shot, Wolf of Wall Street themed. Probably one of the funnest videos that we shot. Uh, there was like 40 extras, a lot of screaming and yelling. There was a lot of uh, legal substances floating around on set. I saw that, I had dude. a crowd to control. Yeah, you partake? I did not partake, well, I know dude. you did. You're a good guy. No, I didn't, dude. You're a good dude. Guy. I don't partake in those I, kind of I things. I saw him do it. Dog, you didn't see anything because I didn't do anything, dude. He was wearing an American flag suit. That is true. Yeah. I was wearing an American flag suit. Uh-huh. But I wasn't doing the white stripes, dog. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're good. But yeah, no, dope video. I'm super proud of it. It drops today, but it dropped already. Um, the BTS video is on my page too, uh, dropped. So you go check that out. Um, pretty sick to see the behind the scenes. Oh, let's go. You got my boy Dawson Jet in there? Dawson Jet are in there. Dawson, I had to do some pickup shots with the other day. Oh, let's go. Um, and Jet, yeah. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah, dude. I'm trying to think of what else, because that video was so chaotic. Like, how do you feel when you're doing a music video with that many moving parts and that many people? Um, I feel fine. It's fun. It excites me. It's just you got to have the team to do it. And obviously, you saw we had a lot of hands on deck with that. We had, you know, 10 people in their corner to handle all these other people and, and play their part. We had people set designing. We had people PAing. We had people going out and running to get stuff. We had people, you know— Assistant directing, so it's just like I had to have that team that that had my back so I can control the show and tell everybody and control the fucking circus, you know? Yeah. Frankie, some people tell me that you're the drone king. Is this true? Yeah, who said that? Rook? I just <laughs> Yeah, you- Rook. The drone king? Now, I, I, I do drop dr- drone shots. Um, I had the Maverick one, and I flew that a lot more than I do now. Mm. I flew it everywhere, Hawaii, Puerto Rico. I didn't want to do it in France because I was afraid to get arrested. I almost flew through the Randy's Donut Hole in L.A., Scared to do it though, but I was right there though. I was right there. 
Um, and I'm going to assume that you're bringing this up because I crashed it on a Young M.A. shoot. Dang it, dude. Yeah, I was bringing it up, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that happen? Well, Rook was like, hey, I want this shot of like pulling out. We're in Queens and like a busy highway and a cheap, dirty motel, motel that let us film. And he's like, I want to do a shot where you pull the drone out from the window, go back, go to the side and then flip the camera down. So it's a crazy transition. I'm like, all right, cool. I go out there. You know, I do it one time. Yo, I got it. Yo, just get one one extra for safety. All right, nobody's watching my, like, no one's watching me at all. Um, fly it out, do it again. Hits a light pole. The wings explode. Falls into traffic. Gets ran over once. I run over. I get it. I got the footage. But uh, then Rook had to call another drone operator to get the other shot. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, crashing a drone is never fun because the second you crash it, it's instant panic. E- <sighs> I'm like, when I bought my drones and when I fly them, I kind of expected like, all right, this could be just two grand down the toilet. So I got to accept that. And when I, when I crashed it, I was mad because I don't have a drone anymore and I'm going to have to pay for another one. Um, but I wasn't super mad because I got my money's worth because I flew that shit everywhere. Yeah. And that's like, it's just part of the game too. You know, it's kind of inevitable when bro, you're in that it's space. Part of the game. You want to talk about the game. People are like equipment this and that it's like bro i have so much money in equipment and i have so many repairs bro you know how many times i repaired one lens like i've paid like two grand for one lens twice and repaired it like two grand like yeah. could have just bought the lens again i yeah yeah bro it's it's, it's <laughs> nuts bro dude i crashed a drone once too i'll tell you about it it was a story that i don't think was ever gonna i was in iceland and mm-hmm. uh i was flying backwards and it was one of the small drones that don't have the sensors in the back mm-hmm. so run into the the cliff side, you know what I mean? But the thing is, I'm like all the way up there and it's at the bottom of this cliff. And now there are people like walking down to the bottom of this cliff, dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, bro, I fall. I like fall down this cliff. There's like a, I didn't know this, but my girlfriend told me after the fact, but there was like a man praying for me because I like, I I took a- You fell? Off a cliff. You fell. Correct. Rolled down a cliff? Oh, dog. I like- Do we have footage? No, because the drone crashed. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, no, dude, I was gashed up pretty badly from that. Uh, so I bring it up just to tell you, if you crash your drone, sometimes it's not worth getting it. You know what I mean? Like, not all the time, but sometimes. Because like, you were going to get it and you rolled down a cliff. It, like, when I say a cliff, I mean, it was like, I probably, it was probably the closest I've come to dying. Wow. In, like, the last couple of years, for sure. What was another time that you almost died? Other time, dude. <laughs> I mean, I got a couple. We don't need oh to get into this, but I no, do have we, a we want the, we, you know, we need the audience to love you, too. I cracked my head open when I was a kid. Wow. Yeah. And that's where all this came from. <laughs> <laughs> this is what sparked it. Yo, my cousin, uh, smart kid, he's a fucking scientist in Rochester, like, and he's getting, he's getting his master's in some type of fucking neuron science. I don't fucking know. But... What, what, he was just a kid, and he got hit by a car and had, like, some brain thing, and I think that's what sparked him to be a genius now. I mean, who knows? You know what I mean? Like, it I could. think so. I think a little head trauma is good for you. I'm going to change it, and we're going to talk about some of your photos, Frankie. All right, cool. I also want to ask you something. <laughs> okay, So what's quick. up? i never seen that. I want to. The video you did with Webb with the pirates. Oh, it got taken down because of the sample. Can you send it to me? I want to see can't it. See. Dude, that's a classic video, bro. <laughs> I Like, that video inspired me so much. To never put a skit in my music video. <laughs> <laughs> I like it was good. It was a good period piece. I enjoy it. But to me, like the game, like you, it's already hard enough to get. Granted, Webb has a fan base, so he can do things like this. Mm-hmm. But I think you got to get right to the meat and potatoes when you're getting to like the music and music videos. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's like why you put the claymation in the front. It's like the thing that like hooks them in. Uh-huh. Oh, now sometimes a cool movie thing is good. Quick people now have short attention spans, but. It I depends. See, I think it depends. I want to see that so bad. Well, you know what's crazy about that? Talking about drone crashing, we had a drone operator that fucking flew the drone into the ocean, dude. It like he flew it back in, hit the side of the boat, sank to the bottom. The only reason we were able to get the drone shots, and if you look at the video, they're kind of boo-boo quality, is because they saved his, his phone. phone. Yeah, that's happened to me. Yeah, it's rough, dude, but sometimes it's the only way. It happens. I want to run you through a list of some photos that you've taken. All right, cool. And, I'm and, sweating like a pig. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> Let me see. You look good on camera, dog. Hey. Good. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the photo I saw and you're gonna tell me a little bit of the story behind <clears throat> it. Sounds good. All right. Is this like hot ones where he's like, I'm gonna throw a, day, a thing out there? It could be. Like <laughs> you don't watch hot ones, huh? No, I do watch. Does that count as a podcast? No. That's what I'm saying, so I don't watch podcasts. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead, my um, man. Go ahead. Photos. You took a photo of Nav. Yes. 
That was on the set of uh, French Montana and Nav's video. I forgot the name of it. Uh, yeah. Where, where did that happen? Uh, we That was in New York. It was on set of French's video. Uh, they had access to this huge nightclub. I don't know what it's called now. It used to be the old Playboy Club. So super history behind that club where we shot it, that uh, photo at, is like a super secret uh intimate bar area that like only like big celebrities go there like ASAP Rocky and Rihanna had their birthday party there so that's kind of cool you know the old Playboy Club got to take a photo of Nav there you know it's kind of legendary I guess yeah and I'm gonna throw the photos up as you tell the story too I love that I love that yeah just for you dude we're gonna talk about Rod Wave Rod Wave um we were on a set with him shooting a video for him and Young Boy it was a project through the same. Through, it was a Kawhi Leonard pl- project about basketball. It was the first one that he did. Uh, Rook was shooting a video. We were shooting Rod Wave's part um, at a studio in Tampa during the Super Bowl. Right after the day after the Super Bowl, we shot that. So I took his photos. Rod was mad cool. He was talking about gambling with little baby and shit. And super cool guy. We're gonna go Joey Badass, dude. Joey Badass. Um, we were shooting a video for Stally. In New York at uh, FD Photo Studios, <clears throat> um, seeing this dope Mercedes outside, I'm like, yo, that's a dope car. I was like, you want to go like sit by it and do a video? Luckily, we didn't because ended up being Joey Badasses. And then, you know, Stally and Joey know each other. He came in the room, got was able to take a photo of Joey and Stally. That was cool. Yeah. And then Neo, too, dude. Neo, yeah. Neo's a cool guy. Um, uh, super dope. Uh, that was on set for Neo and Zay France uh, Lay in Low video uh, directed by Rook. Bigger budget video. It was just a house party in LA. Um, yeah, I got to take a photo of ne- some photos of Neo. I got a photo of him smoking a huge ass blunt. He was just turnt, man. You know, he was like drinking. He was like smooth as hell, walking around cool. Like whatever you expect Neo to be, Neo's the man, man. He's an idol. Yeah, and I saw a very wholesome photo with Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, he wanted to be wholesome. That was cool. That was uh, on set for Big Daddy Wiz video that uh, Rook shot. We shot it in Nashville on an off day that uh, Wiz was on tour. He had his mom with him and his son with him. He wanted the video to be cool and uh, a little bit wholesome, so he wanted to put uh, Nash in there, his son, and I was able to capture that moment, um, you know, on photo of him and his son, which is, you know, a piece of history, you know? Yeah, and then you got Soldier Boy too, dude. What's going on there? Yeah, big big Draco got Soldier Boy. We were at uh, French Montana's birthday party. Um, so we were just hanging out there. I shot a couple photos, you know, at that fo- at that party. Uh, Soldier was there. The Rock was there. No, not The Rock. Uh, Vin Diesel was there. Swiss beat everybody, you know. That's so, crazy, that dude. Cool. And then what about Roddy Rich? That was at the Gunner tour. At the mm. at the Gunner uh, back, the backstage. The show that you were telling me earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't even like. I like for music and hip hop. I'm kind of stuck in my ways. Like I like what I like. Uh, and I do listen to new stuff when it gets brought to my attention and I do like it or when I work with a person. So I think I shot Roddy Rich. I didn't even really know who he was at the time, you know, yeah, but just it was beca- also earlier in his career. It was, yeah, this was like right when he like blew, like blew. I think that was like one of his first songs just popped or something or second, you know? And yeah, so that was cool. I was taking a picture of him smoking, you know, which I don't know if was out there before. So yeah, sometimes I get like cool moments that people might not ever get, you know? Yeah. Another thing I saw, I saw you with Charlemagne. Charlemagne the God, yeah. Yeah, what was it like working with Charlemagne? Cool dude, funny, um, funny dude. Uh, Rick was shooting the uh, <clears throat> Black Men Don't Cheat video with him and Lil Duval, and we shot uh, uh, Charlemagne's part with Caleb. Caleb was there with the red. And yeah, I was just able to get a photo of him, you know? It's kind of like Pokemon, bro. I got to catch them all. I got to <laughs> get everybody I can, like, and then eventually I'm going to have my picture book come out. I just don't know if I want to do it, like, my Instagram where it's like me and my life where it's like low riders mixed with celebrities or just keep it separate like celebrities artists and then like low rider book and I don't know do it all together dog yeah I think so I mean I, I did a you photo a book, book. Yep. that's why I was gonna bring it up and like I look back at it cause it's like I wouldn't want two books you know what I mean I kinda like just going through cause I just did it one book but all in chronological order oh wow you know what I mean okay like maybe not exactly chron- but like eras you know what I mean like this was this shoot this was this shoot this was this shoot but like in that order like that you okay know? I'd probably just do it more like attention grabbing but yeah I just don't know if, like I would love just to have a book of all my stuff but I don't know if it's that's something I plan to do like even further in my career yeah. so it's just like I'm not worried about it now like I'm thinking in the head like should I separate them one thing what? I learned about doing things like that is 
Sometimes you just got to put it out there because you'd be surprised how many people want to support you. Yeah. Like, you know, like if you dropped a photo book, like I know I'm copping a Frankie Fire photo book. Yeah. But this is the thing, too, about that, because like I've made some merch and like, you know, clothing and other stuff and like that. And it's just like whatever I put out there. I want people to buy it because they generally like it. Like, I don't want people just to buy it just to support me, too. Like, I want yeah. anything I put out there, I really want people to want my shit, especially with my videos. Like, I want people to want my videos, not just me, you know? No, that makes a lot of sense, dude. I'm going to talk to you about a couple more photos, though. We're going to talk, yeah. we're gonna talk yeah, Lil Wayne. Fuck. Let's do Wheezy. Um, <laughs> that was at a concert in Bridgeport in CT. Really close, like, really, like, it no. just happened, like, kind of. Yeah, that happened December. Okay, that's not yeah. too long ago. Yeah, it was a concert he did in uh, Bridgeport. Like, he literally just flew off the... He landed at Sikorsky, got off the jet, got on stage, performed, and just dipped out. So That's crazy they landed at Sikorsky, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, that was like... If anyone doesn't know, Sikorsky's a military base, so just to be able to land a private jet on a military base is like, you gotta be... Lil Wayne. Yeah, to do that, which is cool. Yeah, and then the last one I'm gonna bring up is Tory Lanez. Mm-hmm. Okay, Tory Lanez. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that was on a shoot we did in Miami with, uh, Tory Lanez and Spot Em Got Em. It was really Spot Em Got Em song. Now, that video was almost a breaking point, how we talked about earlier, for Rook. So I'll let you, let him talk about that on his episode. You could bring that up, the Tory Lanez and Spot Em Got Em video. I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, Tory took a photo of him, was cool. Um, took pictures of Spot Em Got Em. Uh, he loves photos. He loves photos so much that... I took more gigs of photos of him than the whole video of gigs of video footage. <laughs> that's a fun fact, dude. Yeah, that's a fun fact that I just he just kept snapping. I went to use the bathroom and he's just I just hear him. Was yep. he asking you to? Yeah, he's like Frank, get this, and then I'm in the bathroom <laughs> taking a leak, and he's like Frank, where you at? Frank, Frank? Lang, where these photos? Frank, get me these photos. <laughs> I must have liked the photos, dude. Yeah, did he of, post a lot of them? He did post them. Oh, that's good. Did he tag me? Well, if he didn't tag me, my people tagged me. Yeah. They were dope, too. They were dope, like, clean, but, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I also want to talk to you about some of where your photos have been used. So, yep. like, Mopstick. That became, the photo you took ended up becoming the cover art. Yeah, I guess that's, like, my most prized possession of, like, <laughs> where my photos have gone. Thanks to French, really, you know, and Rook. Um, yeah, Mopstick. I shot the cover of Mopstick and... When you go download the single, it's in everybody's phone. Like, so when you play it on your car and you see that photo of them on the airboat, I shot that photo. How does it feel <clears> to have, like, that's something we could talk about. Not only just, like, photo stuff, but video stuff. Like, how does it feel to have the amount of views that you have across all your photos and videos? I mean, it's got to be millions and millions of views <clears> at this point. Yeah, I mean, from people posting their videos and photos and getting, you know, their views and then publications and people using my photos, like, that's it, you know, like... I want to make, like, my whole thing is I want to make dope art. And you could make dope art, but it doesn't feel as good if people don't see it, you know? You want people to see it and, and appreciate it and enjoy your your art as you enjoy other people's art. So that's, like, a huge thing for me is just, like, I'm happy that I can get my art out for people to even see it. Like, that's such a hard thing is to get your arts for people to see it. I think everybody's trying to do that, you know? So it makes me happy. It's a blessing, man. Yeah, dude. And I want to talk to you about Blue Chills because I know the photo you took there got used in Billboard Mag. Uh, no, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. My source is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Ray, right? That, that was Ray. Ray. That yeah, was bro, Ray. I'm on point, guys. I'm on point, that yeah. That was Ray. Um, yeah, the Blue Chills video, Um, I shot the VHS to that. I think there were some photos in there I did too, but the photos that I did take are French. Yeah, I ended up on Rolling Stones. I got my credit. Um, Super dope. I did regret... Though they did, uh, French's people did reach out to me to shoot a Rolex commercial, like uh, for a photo for Rolex of his custom Rolex, and I kind of turned it down because I didn't think I was gonna be able to kill it, like how I know, like you know, uh, product photos should be. Yeah, and I should just fucking did it, bro. Yeah, that would have been like another like. Pfft. That would have been sick, dude. Yeah, take it. Even if you think you're gonna fuck up, just do it. Yeah, because worst <laughs> things they they just don't use. It. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, at least you did it. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh. But then, you know what, let's bring it back to your career, dude. Like, and more, like, I want to talk to you about, like, a struggle that you might have had in your career. Like, what was something that you had to overcome? Something that I had to overcome. I yeah. Mean, like, getting into, like, video and everything. Uh, really, just, I, I don't know. I guess pushing yourself, like, pushing yourself to that next limit where you don't think you could do something and then you have to do it. And also just having to survive, you know what I mean? And. I don't know. I don't know. I, there's just so many different struggles. I don't. I don't really like to dwell on 
the hardships too much. I feel like I dwell more on my personal hardships more, but like mm. far as career, it's just like I don't know. Charge it to the game. Charge it to the game. Eat shit and work, and you know, I guess just try to push yourself to that next limit because it's it's hard. I think that's the hardest part. And when you look back, you're like, what I used to think was hard is now easy. You know. Yeah. And that that hump of getting to that point is the hard part. You know, whether that entails of. Who knows what? That everyone else's journey is going to be different. So it's hard to take that leap. Did you have a good support system when you were coming into like video? Oh yeah, I had a, oh really? I had a great support system. Like I mean, yeah, I mean, because it was like you know I was doing videos locally and like the whole story with Rook and me linking up with Rook and Rook was just starting to get big at the time. Um, he started you know was real close to Smoke Dizza and Cinematic and like getting his foot way more into the industry, and I was able to come in learn from him, work with him, but then, you know, learn from the people that were around him and bigger DPs and directors and everybody got my skill up where I could help him. And basically all the, like the smaller videos that he does that aren't like huge budget ones, like I DP almost all of them, you know? So like I was able to come in, learn from someone super close, learn from other people around him, soak up the game and then be able to use it to help him, help myself and help others, you know? So and I do try to help others when people reach out with questions of like, what do you what do you think about this or what do you think about this? You know, I try to give them my honest opinion and help because people have helped me. You know, they, yeah. people need to help each other. You know, what advice would you give to somebody who's trying to get into the game right now? Eat shit and work. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> it's tough. You know, like just don't expect anything overnight. It's a long run. It's a lot of headaches. You're gonna want to quit. Um. But at the end of the day, you got to enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you're going to leave it anyway. If you enjoy it and you generally love it, you're going to keep doing it, even though it's going to have, you know, its moments. Because what, anything's going to have its moments, right? What motivates you? Motivates me? I don't know, man. Honestly, like, I just want to do cool shit. Like, I want to have a fun life. So it's like, I want to just do shit I thought I would never do and go places I would never see and just enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, I want to have fun, see shit, have a good laugh. You know, that's all we're here for, right? Have a good laugh and then we're done. Yeah, and what's Frankie Fire's message to the world? Oh, my God, what is this fucking we all the world and shit? Nah, <laughs> Michael Jackson? Have, dog, if you, so if you died tomorrow... Blanket. <laughs> dog, if, if, if you died tomorrow, knock on wood, because I know it's not going to happen... <laughs> But, you know, like, what do you want to be remembered what for? What if I just had on my gravestone, fuck bitches, get money, and it's like a picture of me like this? <laughs> nah, I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't, I don't know. That's deep. Like, bro, I'm just, just have a good time. Don't be a fucking asshole. You know, enjoy the shit. Enjoy the people around you. Keep good people around you. You know what I mean? Like, mm, that's a good you one. You are who the people you keep around you. And so you want to keep good company because at the end of it's like, you're not going to have fun around a bunch of assholes. So it's like, keep good people around you. Keep good energy. Enjoy this shit. Do do it to the max, but don't take everything so serious. You know what I mean? Like, bro, it's life. There's ups and downs. You you could be great here today and terrible tomorrow. Like, fuck it. Yeah, dude. What? Fuck it. That's it, right? That's my message. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll quote it, dude. <laughs> What's next for Frankie Fire? What's next for me is... um. I really want to get into bigger productions. You know, I've shot a couple bigger productions. Um, I've had, you know, labels, commissioners, and people give me opportunities to write for bigger projects. I just haven't had that one video that really pops it off. Like, I feel like everybody has that one that really pops it off for them and gets them, like, where they need to be. So my thing is just to keep working, doing what I do, keep trying new things. I always keep my head in what's new, what's hot, try new things. Oh, every video I do, I try to do something new, you know, and put it out there for people to see to eventually give me more opportunities to get bigger videos and do bigger shit and get that one that I finally pop on, you know? Yeah, dude. So I'm trying, I think... Oh, you know what? I know <laughs> you got I, shit I, again. No, I got one more. I got one. More. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Frankie, if people want to connect with you, where could they find you? <clears throat> Bro, we're ending it. We could talk for like another hour if you want. Yeah, we could. <laughs> we're ending it, dog. <laughs> no, I got a shit. No, that's good. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so really, the best source to hit me at, at hit me up at, because <clears throat> I don't really answer Facebook and stuff. Is just. On Instagram, it's Frankie, F-R-A-N-K-I-E, underscore fire. Frankie underscore fire. It's a picture of me and my lowrider. Um, message me if you want to shoot. I'll probably redirect you to Ray. We'll get it all together. 
Instagram is the best way to contact me or through my website. If you if you email me through my website, FrankieFire.com, FrankieFire.com, FrankieFire.com. It's just FrankieFire.com once, but <laughs> Google me. Type in Frankie Fire. You can fucking Google me. FrankieFire.com will pop up. My accolades will pop up. I have an IMDB. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I know now. I have IMDB. It has three things on it. It has Chris Rebby Triggered, mm-hmm. Dizzy Wright Video with Webby, mm-hmm. and it has uh, MILF Hunters or something. I didn't shoot MILF Hunters, so I don't know why that's on there. You you were an extra? No, I don't know. You were participating? <sighs> no, I don't know how that got in there. I got to Lead talk- actor? Uh, I was not involved in MILF Hunters, um, but it's on my IMDB. Uh, fun fact. Okay, facts. Frankie. <laughs> he wasn't involved in Bill Hunters. Okay. All right, Frankie, I appreciate you coming on Frankie the pod. FrankieFire.com. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on the pod. No, dude. thank you for having me, dude. Ooh. This was fun. I love this. Uh, a lot of people don't hit me up for this, so I got... Bro, you didn't even dig deep into it, bro. There's so many lights. You didn't even talk about anything about the Lowriders. Not like... I didn't go... I know I didn't so think about so much the low- we could talk... I'll be back. Don't worry. This is going to do you like 15,000 views. Like, Let's go, dude. It's going to be great. You, you know. Want, wait. You want to talk about the Lowriders, dude? We can talk about it. I'll, I'll sit here. I'll sit here all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we talk about the Lowriders. Yeah. So, wait. Frankie, why are you so into Lowriders? Uh, I was just always into cars. My dad, um, he did everything. He used to build. Um, he went to school. He used to build uh, engines. He used to work on airplanes in Sikorsky. He was always in the cars. You know, my dad passed away, but he was 77. So he was, you know, my dad's a lot older than me. He had a bunch of old school cars and stories. So I would always go to the car shows, old car shows, take photos. And I think I like them because they photographed well and I took great photos and I really liked it. And I started to appreciate the cars, talk to the people more. And then really getting into like currency as my favorite artist, he was into low riders. So then I'm like, yo, these are sick. I was in the Dunks first, which is a 71 to 76 Caprice or uh, Impala on big wheels. You know, the cars in Florida with big wheels. Yeah. But then I really got into low riders. I started tapping in with the low rider scene out there. I met my boy Street Entertainment, and he just took me under his wing, brought me to L.A., <clears throat> and showed me around to everyone like— I could, we, I'll just make it brief because I'm sure your audience doesn't give a fuck about lowriders. No, yeah. they, <laughs> but, they, they care what you care about, dude. Yeah, but 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 long story short, like low riding is a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. It's all over the world. There's low riders in Japan. There's low riders in Dubai. There's low riders all across the world. It's a huge cultural impact. And my boy bringing me around, I was able to meet some of the legends of low riding. The people that you know, these people put tens of years their whole life into building these cars they put hundreds of thousands of dollars into it and there's people that are known in LA that are that have names in LA that are legendary lowriders that are known across the world just because of their contribution to the game so I was able to meet these people talk to them sit in their cars ride with them go eat wings with them legendary people from LA real LA natives real people you know what I mean not people that moved there like I, I met these real people and Love the love the cars, and then once I hit the switch for the first time, I was like, I need to buy a lowrider. Like I, ha- I like I always wanted one. I always knew I was gonna have one, but as soon as I hit that switch and I made it hop, I was like, was I the- need this sooner than later. Like I need this now. What was that feeling when you got that first lowrider, dude? Oh my god, dude! It was like Chris. Like it's the best day ever. It's like the best Christmas present you could ever get. So it's like I got I bought the lowrider off my homie Danny from uh, Westbound and in Inglewood. Uh, shout out to them. He hooked me up with the homie price. You know, I don't know if you'll see it on the photos that Squire's going to put. It's a, it's a <laughs> 79 Cadillac Coupe de Ville with candy paint patterns. Um, and he hooked it up. I bought it, sent him the money. He shipped it to Connecticut. I wasn't home at the time. My dad had to, like, help the guy get it off the thing. It's all low to the ground. And then eventually I had no idea about, like, fixing old cars or anything about it. So I'm learning Eventually, I meet my boy in New Haven, who, like, my boy June that works on my car, and he has a little rider. And, uh, bro, it's the best feeling ever. I, once I got asked, I was driving everywhere, having fun. Um, fucking, I sent a picture to, uh, to Spitter that I got my car. I was like, yo, got my first one. He FaceTimed me immediately. Like, yo, where's it at, man? Where's it at? Like, that was a cool feeling. You know, it was dope. That's yeah, right. Were you always a well-behaved kid? Yeah. For the most part, Yeah. I had my moments like Florida, like I said, we could deep dive. We're not gonna, we don't have to stretch it too long. I'll come back for part two. But like Florida was like, you know, moving from Florida to Connecticut was a huge shift. Like I was more of a badass down in Florida of like just a kid getting in the fight, smoking weed, staying out all night. Like 
not not portray myself as like a bad per like, but I was just more into like all I cared about was like, let's find some girls, let's smoke some weed, let's stay out all night, you know, couple little things here and there. So it was a huge shift because like at like 15 in Florida, like people were throwing house parties, doing coke, like it was crazy. Versus like I come to Connecticut, and it's just like. Oh, we just kick it, you know, smoke a little weed. Like, it's not as intense. So I think that really changed me when I moved up here. Like, if I was to stay in Florida, it could have been, like, a worse decline of Frankie. There wouldn't be no fire. <laughs> Dang, dude. <laughs> so one last thing I want to ask, because I'm pretty confident in this, but doesn't Rook have, like, kind of the same, like, Florida, like, Connecticut kind of background? Yeah, so crazy enough, uh, when I was in middle school and high school in Florida— Rook was down there in college in Palm Beach. So I lived in Jupiter, Palm Beach. He lived, he stayed in Palm Beach. And he, from his stories is that like, he was there at the same time I was, but in college. And he was a rapper down there. He was start, he started doing directing and he was, he was just a lit dude. And he knew all the local rappers that like, I would like, like me and my boy would listen to Triple J and One Hot and Van Damme. And he's like hanging out with all these dudes. So when we actually connected and started talking, he's like, I, I was like, I grew up down there. He's like, oh, I live down there. I was like, you know, this person? Yeah. How do, it was just a cool full sale moment of like, you know, these random, you know, like legendary local artists down there, you know, like it was a cool connection that we yeah, had. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we're gonna cut it. Yeah, All right, that. well, if we no, want to edit, good. but but you gonna are you but are you gonna edit it? I'm gonna put those things in the other part. Is it gonna flow well? It'll flow. So well. this isn't gonna be in it. Right, we're, how no, we're no, talking no, through right no, now. No, no, no. This will be. I'm, I'm still I'm going. Nice. I'm looking you right in the I'm eyes. Nice. I'm I, I laughed halfway through because I was just like, <laughs> "Squire's interviewing me." <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's a good, it's a good pod. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna cut the cameras. <laughs> I want to share with you guys my thought of the day. And my thought of the day is this. It's okay to stop and smell the roses sometimes. I know it can be hard when you're caught up in your career or have a goal, but you can't forget to enjoy the process. Because the whole reason you're doing whatever you're doing is because you want to be doing it and it's supposed to make you happy. And like always, you got to believe before the world does.